you know, if we go from, from life to intelligence, you know, conscious self-awareness, there's a similar collection of puzzles, obviously different in detail, but revered by many through the centuries. And in the modern era, you know, David Chalmers is famous, you know, down, down at NYU now, famous for articulating the so-called hard problem of consciousness, right? The problem that if matter is all there is, matter and fields, and if electrons and quarks and the entities that they build up, protons and neutrons, if they have no inner world, if the lights aren't on inside an electron, if it has no inner sensation, if a third person account precisely describes what's going on with an electron, there's nothing else. How could it possibly be that when these particles swirl together, they somehow generate an inner sensation, a quality that simply is absent at the level of the fundamental ingredients? Mm. So, you know, he was dividing up the problems in, in neuroscience and brain science into those that have to do with the mechanism, the function of the brain, which ultimately are, can be difficult to work out, but it's clear what to do to figure out you know, what's going on when you know, my arm goes up and down, what sort of brain signals are making that happen. But he considered a qualitatively different question to be the one that I was referring to, namely how can yeah. the lights turn on? Do, do, you, do you see that distinction? Well, I always confess myself baffled by it. I, I mean, I, I do see it as a, as, a deep, as a profoundly difficult problem. I am committed to the view that it, that there is nothing there other than physics. There's nothing there other than, um, as, as you say, atoms and electrons. Um. And where does, where, I mean, I agree with you, hmm. but where does that sensibility come from? Is it based on evidence? Um, I suppose it comes from the feeling that, um, as an evolutionist, we start with physics, we st and then we get chemistry, and um, we get an, a process, Darwinian natural selection, which gradually builds up nervous systems step by step. They get more and more complicated. Um, I cannot under... I can't... I can't see any other way but that. Um, I, Could that be limited mental acuity and creative powers? I think it has to be that, uh, but um, I... I um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm more curious to know what you think, but as a, as a physicist... Um, I thought I was asking the question. No, well, no, it's good. No, no, we, we, we actually were going to go back and forth on questions. And um, I, I, I agree. I can't imagine that there's something beyond Schrodinger's equation of quantum mechanics and the interactions with the particles that's going on inside this physical structure inside of my head. But I still feel deeply puzzled so by how it is that I can sit here and have this, this inner world. Everything that we do in physics and think science more generally is so focused on the third person account. We can look out, objectively see data in the world, find the patterns in that data, articulate the patterns in mathematical equations, use the mathematical equations to predict what's gonna happen next or the probability of what's gonna happen next in a quantum mechanical framing. And that's what we do. We never have this turn inward to try to have that same kind of rigor and description of what's happening inside of our heads. Now, what David Chalmers says is, he says that's, that's, that's not just a small issue, that's a huge issue, if I understand what he's saying correctly. He's saying we perhaps are missing a side of the story which would endow perhaps electrons and quarks and other particles with a degree of proto-consciousness. Maybe there's something beyond mass and charge and spin. Maybe there's something there, and only by taking into account that quality that we've been missing can a lot of those particles yield the sensations that yeah. we're all having right now. It starts to sound dangerously like Deepak Chopra, if you're not careful. Well, um, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell David that you, that you said that. Uh, but um, I mean, I, I'm also yeah. um, intrigued by philosophers' thought experiments where they say things like, imagine that you could um, make an exact copy of, your, of every single yeah. atom of, your, of, you, of you. And, yeah. and, and, there, are, and um, there, are, there are two of you standing side by side. Which one, which one is you? Both. I, I have no doubt that they're both. Yes, but then, yeah. but then um, 
Presumably, you would, you would have the same consciousness. Yeah, same but memories. Then, but then they would Diverge. start to drift. They would start to drift, drift apart. Yeah, so there'd be yeah. two of me. Yes. You know, I'm not sure that would be such a good thing for the world. But um, yeah, that that's that's uh, I, on 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 that question. I feel I feel secure in saying that. Uh, obviously, if one day we can do this, it'll be the best way to find out. But part of that sensibility for me, and I'm wondering if it's the same for you. I don't think that consciousness has to take place inside a particular physical structure, you know, the human brain or the brain of an, any, other, any other animal. You know, I think that once you replicate the function, you've replicated the experience. Do you? Do you? Yeah, and, and I, mean, I think if you, if you could somehow upload everything into a computer, that, that, that also would have to have our consciousness. And, and, but but the, the, these, I, I agree with David Chalmers, it is the hard problem, and it's certainly too hard for me. Uh, but, I'm, but I wouldn't take the leap to say that, therefore, I know something like, you know, every atom must have a little smidgen of consciousness right. or something like no, that. No, I don't think he took that step um, without a, a, a great deal of difficulty, with yeah. basically banging into every possible avenue that he pursued for many years, yeah. and, and it almost felt like there was no other place to turn. Um, and having not gone through the journey that he and others who spend their lives trying to figure out consciousness mm. uh, have gone through, mm. it's hard to know whether I or perhaps even you would feel the same way after hitting wall after wall yeah. after yeah. wall. Mm. Uh, but it's certainly the case that um, um, even on planet Earth, where we discuss that life may have had a unique origin, the arising of intelligence and conscious self-awareness that also seems to have been a miraculously improbable event that allowed that to happen. Yes. Right? I, I mean, mean, what if the meteor hadn't wiped out the dinosaurs? I mean, would we all be sitting here and we'd all be dinosaurs and having this conversation, or would we never have uh, gotten to that place? I suspect not. I mean, I think I think that we, there would be lots of dinosaurs around, but it, but it's yeah. it's. But we would, I, yeah. I think it's a I think it's a it's a major step. We were talking about whether the origin of life was a big step, and perhaps it was. Um, so we don't, that, as I said, that was a corollary of whether we think there's life elsewhere. So, it, so there might be swarms all over the universe of bacterial type yeah. life. But if we ever discovered life elsewhere, it would have to be by radio waves coming in. And that means it would have to be technologically sophisticated life. And that means it would have to have overcome another barrier. So that the barrier from bacterial level life maybe there are several in intermediate ones, and then up to the kind of life that's capable of producing radio waves that we can detect. Right, so long if it's far enough away. I mean, if it's near enough by, in principle, we could... If it's near enough by, yes, but I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting that's probably not. Um, I suspect that if we ever do discover extraterrestrial life, it will be by SETI, by... by and in, in that case, we have the question, do we have a second barrier, or maybe a third or a fourth barrier, right. and pr to produce the sort of intelligence? We don't have to get into consciousness. I mean, it could be unconscious, but it... But, if but it could it, talk it, to us, that would be good but, enough. But right. if, it, if, it, if it can produce radio sig signals, right. then that, that's... An, and that's a much more mundane question than the question of whether, whether the light, as you say, the consciousness sure. light is turned on. 